From Field of Dreams to Dances with Wolves to The Bodyguard, our first guest has starred in some of Hollywood's most iconic movies. Please welcome the one and only Kevin Costner. <laughs> Mr. Big Shot. Big Shot. Who do you think you are? Um, you, you look fantastic. How are you? I'm good, thanks. It's good to see you. And you just had a birthday recently. I did. I just turned um, 60 years old. No, you didn't. Okay. I don't know how that happened. But no, that's not right. Yeah. That's impossible. Doesn't it sound weird? It just it's like when you're a kid, you hear a certain age, and you have an image of what that is. Ancient, 60. Yeah. I mean, really, truly, I, yeah. 40 must have been ancient. And we just all keep lying to ourselves. Right, right. <laughs> but then you have this, I, I think it's really all about how we feel. and, and Yeah, you know, and people want to throw you apart and you say, no, 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 but they do. Yeah, you know? <laughs> they do it anyway. Yeah. But you do, you look great. Right. And I think now, uh, I, just, I just want to reflect uh, back on some of your work because we should just take a look at some of the, the uh, wonderful the body of work that there's that. <laughs> there's that. There's that. There's <laughs> that. A, a wonderful body of work. <laughs> okay. No, that's seriously. You. Then you. Then we I guess start, that body of work. Then we start putting clothes on you. Uh, <laughs> this is something I learned today, which I didn't know. I you you got. First of all, you lived in a trailer. Was it a trailer or like your car? My, my car, when I would come into Hollywood, I, I, I didn't know anything about Hollywood. I, I just knew that you gotta kinda hang out the place you think you're gonna work. And uh, I would drive in from Orange County and I would go up here to La Brea and Sunset, right by a phone booth. I had a little a camper shell and I, I didn't know anybody, so I slept there and I kinda waited for the phone to ring. It was pay phone. It obviously didn't. So you'd give that number out, like yeah. that was your phone number. That was my thing. That I knew one person in Hollywood, and I would call them once a week, so as to not bother them. So, you know, think, if you think about it, graduating university, and then there I am in a fetal position in a car, waiting to call on Wednesday because I, th I thought I should call in the middle of the week and not <laughs> not blow my one phone call. But it's hard to know how to get started. You know, I think everybody has that particular problem, and in acting. It is, how do you get started? Yeah. So. And so did that phone ring, or how did you get your first it job? Never, well, you know, you, I actually didn't get my first job. I had to go into stage acting. I, I, mean, stage, I was a stage manager. So I, I thought, you know, I wasn't smart enough to be a bartender. I couldn't make change. I never liked when they gave you a dollar plus eight cents. I'd go, <laughs> I don't, but that, that negative numbers was hard for me. And so, you know, I thought, well, I'll take out trash. That's what I'll do, uh, as long as it's movie trash. And so that's how I started. I was a stage manager. Really? Yeah, $3.50 an hour. And where? What, like, what was, At Raleigh what was Studios, the production? Right? Do you well, remember the shows that were, or were they just? It was kind of real low, low budget stuff. It was commercials, but I, you know, and I just, I was just really happy, you know, you know always when you're trying to find your direction, you know, and I was like, I, I was making $3.50. My friends who were graduated at university, they were all like making that. Remember when they said 40K? 60K, company car, and I was thinking, man, I have an interview in a month yeah. from now, and I'm really excited. And then that's all that matters, is it, that It's passion. all it did, because when I found my way, there was also no guarantee. I mean, even though we know what we love, there's just no guarantee anybody's gonna ever pay you anything to do it. And then look at you now. And then your first role was what? My first role as a SAG was, uh, it was in um, uh, Night Shift, you know, Michael, Michael Keaton. I was an extra. You Night know? Shift, yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then Howard. the Big Chill, and the Big Chill was really it. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm 22 or 23. I'm not sure how old I am. Uh, actually, it happened for me. I think I'm about 26, 27. I remember I screamed really loud right at that point, and I remember Michael kind of jerked because he was the main actor. He was being paid a lot of money, and he turned and looked at me and said, "When we do this again, would you do that again?" So I was like. Yeah, thanks. And then in fact, I saw him the other night, you know, win his award. Did he remember that was your first? No, I never, I've never brought it up to him. That's amazing that you worked with him and yeah. that you're seeing each other. Yeah, and it is funny. I'm working as an extra. I mean, I, I was over in London and I see Ronnie Howard and now we'll, we'll talk about things. But just little 
small beginnings. Yeah, and then they do these little, I mean, that's the thing. You shouldn't be ashamed to take anything because it's a foot in the door and, and it leads you to. Yeah, and, and you call home anytime somebody pays you the first time, you call home. Because your dad is real interested in the idea of getting you off the dole. Yeah. <laughs> what did they want you to be? Uh, my, my, my parents, my dad came out, of the, his family came out of the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. And so they saw depression in their life. And my dad had one job his whole life. And he, and he said to me, he said, Kevin, just don't let anybody outwork you. Don't ever let anybody outwork you. And, and like, that's kind of like hard-boiled advice from my father. It wasn't what you call artistic advice, but he just said, if you don't let another man outwork you, he'll never take your job. And that's a whole mentality that came, that came out of my yeah. family. But were they, when you said, I want to be an actor, I mean, did he say, don't you want to do sales? Yeah. I think they knew it that you know I I think they finally saw that I wasn't I wasn't good in school. I loved telling stories and and finally they just said go with God just I think the most distressing thing for a parent is when they don't know how to help you. You know, all dads want to help their sons moms, mm -hmm. but when 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 they don't know exactly your parents when they don't know she's going to stand up and you get booed and you get what and you think when a parent can't help a child, I think that's probably the roughest, one of the roughest places yeah. in the world to be. But it builds character. It's the best thing. Yeah. The way. You know. Uh, well, we have to talk about the movie, but we take a break and we'll talk about Black and White, which is uh, a great message there. Really yeah. interesting story. Great message. We'll be back. Black or White, and uh, I'm going to let you explain what the movie is about. Well, you know, that's simple because I usually make three hour movies, so now I got about six seconds to tell the story. <laughs> The, black or white, it's, it's, at its core, is about the welfare of a child, a, a biracial child. And uh, uh, my daughter passed away, and uh, now we have to care for it. And uh, Octavia Spencer, her family down in South Central, I live up in Brentwood, and who is going to take care of her becomes an issue and turns into custody. And, and suddenly we start to deal with race issues, which is, uh, this movie at its core also is, is about where we find ourselves in this country. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, a lot of times when we deal with race, we're always looking backwards a little bit with Selma or 12 Years a Slave history. But uh, very rarely do we kind of tackle this subject uh, w where we find ourselves at this day and time. And uh, black or white, I hope you see it. It uh, manages to say some things that I think a lot of people wish they could say. And, uh, and it's a great place to start this conversation. So if you uh, are looking for a movie that talks out loud to you, black or white will. Yeah, there's a lot of messages in there, too. It's a, and that little girl, uh, who is she? She's adorable. Yeah, Jelena Stell. You know, it, it, there's child actors are always coming through our business. And the way this one comes about, it starts with 1,000 little girls, goes to 100, goes to 50, and ends up down to three. And that's when I usually get to meet them. And you know, one of the parts about this girl is so charming. But there was three little girls. So two things happen, two hearts break, and one life changes. And in this instance, Jillian's. Uh, Life uh, is, uh, she's having a pretty good time with things yeah. right now. She's adorable. Yeah, she is really she's cute. She's really great. And like I said, there's, you know, um, I don't want to give anything away, but a lot of lives are saved by sometimes you don't see that there's a mirror held up in front of you. You, you just are pointing the finger and saying, you're this. Yeah, and, and there's a couple of speeches in uh, Black or White that uh, if I never made another movie, I'd be really happy if this was my last one. Well, you obviously believe in it because you put up the money for this. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. And, you know, I, at one point when I realized I was going to have to do that, it's not the first time I've done it, though, you know, for, uh, dances, I put money up. But, you know, some, some of the movies that have lived in time for me, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, they were all small movies. People were not sure they were going to work. Guys come out of corn, really? <laughs> um, that's, that, that's the way it was, and black or white was the same thing. And when I finally realized that it wasn't going to be made, I had to walk down the hall and uh, tell my wife that I thought we should pay for it. And she said, really? Uh, she said, I don't know. Did, um, did you, like, hear a voice in a cornfield? Or uh, why, um, why us, Kevin? I mean, really, why can't the voice talk to maybe somebody else? We have to pay for this movie. And I said, I think we do. And she, as a good partner, she looked at me and said, well, if that's what you think, then you go make black or white. And I do think black or white will stand the test of time. I think it has a chance to be a classic. When movies are working at their best, 
they're always saying something that maybe you'll never, ever forget. And I think there's some moments like that in black or white. I agree. I, we, I, Portia and I took away those moments. We, we looked at it and, and felt the same thing. Black or White opens everywhere Friday, and Kaiza will perform after this. Kevin Costner, everybody. Thank you.